Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. This is part two of our beginner friendly tips to help you get started with digital planning. Part one is over on Shay's channel. So if you missed part one, head over there and watch that video and then come back to this one. We're starting at tip number five, which we're gonna talk about the apps that you can use for digital planning. One popular app is Notion. Now, Notion does have a learning curve to it. It takes some time to get used to using Notion. But once you get past the learning curve, you can do some wonderful things in Notion. Notion is like, I don't even know the word to describe. I describe it as Excel on steroids. Excel because on steroids. Because it is like Excel, but it's so much better. It, it does all the things, everything that you want to do. The only thing that Notion doesn't do is um, give you the option to add your stickers in. That's the only thing that it's missing in my book. But everything else, it it does formulas, it calculates your budget for you. You can create task lists, different calendars in Notion. Notion is just an automated version of digital planning. There's another app out, it's a newer app, it's called Xstyles. They also offer the same kind of Notion type experience without as much of a learning curve. It doesn't do all the things from what I've experienced that Notion does, but it gives you that same Notion experience and gives you the option to customize your templates the way that you want them using the block format and adding in the different task lists and calendars. The advantage to me for Notion is you can use that on the web and you can also use the app for it. So there are two ways to access Notion and Notion to me is like having my iPad or using an Apple app. It's with me all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I can access everything I need on Notion at any time with any of my devices. So I like using Notion for digital planning specifically for kind of like long-term planning or just having a safe space for certain information that I can refer to for years on end. As an example, our reading tracker or reading journal is in Notion. And so instead of just having it in a digital planner, like one of the digital planners that I use in GoodNotes or just having it kind of anywhere, either I have a physical book journal as well, but on Notion, it's just like a, a place for me to house all of that information. So that's one of my favorite just things. Gonna say that it's not just, yeah. It, it's, it holds everything together. Yeah. It's this. like a master template for digital planning. And I know you were mentioning that you can't use stickers there, but you can add photos. Mm -hmm. And so that's how some people customize their notions. Some people's notions look beautiful, like just like a planner or whatever the case is. You can change the color of the highlights. You can change the color of the fonts. So you can customize it to make it fit your needs. But um, of course, on Notion, people are normally typing, um, which is why we were mentioning what you might do with a keyboard in the previous video in part one of this. But if you are trying to get that paper and pen experience, then obviously Notion might not be for you. But otherwise, just as like a, a landing spot for all of your thoughts and, and brainstorming and and information like that, I feel like Notion is top tier. Yes, I agree. So speaking of GoodNotes, one app that you can use to get started with digital planning is GoodNotes. Another app that some people use that is pretty popular is called Notability. I feel like I have played around with Notability and even some other types of annotation apps, but I went ahead and purchased GoodNotes some years ago. And so that's just the one that I've stuck to and the one that, well, I would like to say that I know best but GoodNotes comes out with an update like every two days. Every other day. <laughs> and I cannot keep up with all the new features and all of that. I mean, there are lots of updates with GoodNotes. So yeah, if you don't want too many changes from day to day or week to week, you might consider not doing the updates because you don't have to do that, of course. But GoodNotes and Notability are great annotation apps to explore to get started with digital planning. Hmm. We talked about GoodNotes. Well, Shay talked about GoodNotes and we've already talked about Notion, but Unlike Notion, GoodNotes is more of your paper to pen feel. So a lot of times I get people asking me, can you automate this or can you get this to do this? You can't do that in GoodNotes. GoodNotes is your electronic paper and pen. So everything you can do with a paper and pen, that's what you use GoodNotes for. It gives you the option to have a physical planner in digital form on your iPad. So whatever you can do with a paper planner or a paper notebook, you do that with GoodNotes. Such as highlighting you can highlight in good notes you can change the pen color which you could do if you were using a physical paper planner and pen you can add little digital sticky notes and digital stickers literally everything that you could do with a physical planner and pens and pencils highlighters and markers is what you can do and stickers in good notes and stickers and yes stickers. is what you can do in good notes so it's i think that's a good way to put it because that's exactly what it is 
Now that we've talked about the systems that you use for digital planning, one of the main things you need to make sure that when you start your digital planning journey is you establish a routine. Routines are probably the most important part of digital planning. You have to um, establish a routine that works for you. Make sure that you're checking in with your planner. I check in with mine at the beginning of the month. We sit down, we both do plan with me videos. Um, check in with my planner at the beginning of the week. I actually check in with mine throughout the day to make sure that I've completed any tasks that I scheduled for myself and to make sure that I'm on track to reach what Whatever it is that I need to throughout the week. Similarly to if you had a physical planner, if you went into Target and you bought a physical planner yet you never opened it, you never checked, you wrote in let's say a monthly to-do list but then you didn't look at it for three more months, it's literally the exact same phenomenon. So all the different routines that you would have to implement for a physical planner are the exact same ones that you have to implement for a digital planner. You remember that sound that came out with that guy? He was like, I felt like my life wasn't together, so I bought an iPad. Yeah. You know why I feel like I'm stuck in life? It's because I ain't got an iPad. Yeah. The iPad is not gonna change your life. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do the work to actually change yes. your life yes. using the iPad. Yes. Oh, he said, I I feel like people who have their life together have an iPad. iPad. I need Which, an iPad. <laughs> if you use it effectively, I feel like that is true, but if you buy an iPad and it just sits, or if you purchase the digital planner and download it and you don't write in it and it just sits, then it's not really working for you. Right. So I agree that you definitely have to have routines. I always recommend, or I like to plan out my month either at the end of the previous month, like right now we're at the beginning of October. So I typically would plan out my month at the end of September, except there was Hurricane Helene who stopped me from doing that, but I was able to do it a few days ago at the beginning of October. And every day, every couple of days, I'll just check in to see my planner and see what all I have going on, what tasks I wrote down, what goals I set in my planner to make sure I'm on track. I also like to do little fun things within my digital planner. Like I like to add pictures that I take like nice pictures. I like to add those to what I call a mood board. I like to track my habits in there. I like to give myself a reason to go to back to back. the that's, planner. That's my philosophy. <laughs> yes. If you like looking at yes. it, you're going to go back to yeah. it more. And I like to do other things besides going and checking. I, I want something to entice me to go check on my planner that doesn't have to do with my to-do list. But, but I am going to see my to-do list when I do it. But I don't like to go three days without doing my habits or my habit tracking or I do a little journaling in there too so I just like to have reasons to go and to look at my planner so that I am reminded of my goals and my tasks and everything that I'm trying to accomplish or do. I feel like establishing a routine and checking in with that is part of self-care like that's that's you taking time for you to make sure you're accomplishing what you set for yourself so for me that's part of my self-care routine just making sure that I'm on top of just checking in with me. I check in with everyone else in my family. I check in with the kids. I check in with my husband. I need to check in with myself too. My star player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about for you, but I kind of feel frazzled sometimes when I haven't checked in with my planner. I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing? I'm just lost. I feel like I have something to do or I should be doing something, but I have not gone to look at my planner. So I do find that checking as a person who has been a physical planner for the vast majority of their life. I do find that checking in with my physical planner ha was a little bit easier for me just by just by a little bit. Um, the process of physical planning versus digital planning, I feel like it doesn't compare. I feel like digital planning is much easier and more efficient, but I do feel like I checked in with my physical planner a little bit more, probably because I didn't have to like unlock it and go, you know, do all of that. <laughs> I just flipped it open and that was it. But I do recommend trying to create some routines, a weekly planning routine. If you work Monday through Friday, maybe you plan out your week on a Sunday as part of your self-care routine or your weekly reset. If you have time in the mornings to check in with your planners to plan out your day, I recommend doing that. If not in the morning, then definitely at night to plan out that next day. So you definitely have to create those routines and try to have some reasons to come back to your planner. That's why a lot of people will make it pretty, use stickers and stuff like that. So it's pretty to look at. I like just even looking at my <laughs> home screen. Opening my iPad is something that is touching for me, I guess. I just like looking at my iPad just in general and my digital planner looks just as cute, but you definitely have to have some reasons to kind of entice you to, to come to, back to it and keep up with your routines. 
as you're trying to create a digital planning routine, whether you're using Notion or GoodNotes, um, I feel like we use a mixture of both of them. We use yeah. GoodNotes for digital planning and we use Notion. Um, sometimes we use the Notes app and the Reminders app, but as you are creating these routines, you definitely have to have some patience, especially when it comes to navigating Notion. Notion is definitely something that can be a little scary once you are, you know, when you're getting started. I thought Excel was scary, but Notion is five times as scary it as is. Excel. So you definitely have to be able to extend yourself some grace as you are trying to navigate these new systems and create a system that works for you. In addition to extending yourself some grace as you're navigating these different systems. You also want to make sure that you're using systems that actually work for you. So maybe Notion is not for you. Maybe monthly planning isn't for you, but maybe weekly planning is for you. Maybe using the Apple Calendar isn't for you, so you use Google <laughs> Calendar like me, or the Reminders app isn't for you. You don't have to use every single one of these systems that we have shared or that other people share. You don't need your plans to be across 10 different systems. You just need to pick some that work for you. And piggybacking off what you just said, make sure you extend yourself patience throughout this whole process. It's going to be a learning curve. Whichever system you decide to go with, you're gonna to have to learn how to navigate in that system, use that system. Don't let the um, TikToks and Instagram reels of the finished product fool you. It takes time to learn how to get to that and it takes time to complete. Whenever you see the layouts and stuff, it took them time to complete that. It wasn't just 10, 15 minutes sitting down and it was done. That's why I think in my plan with me is I've started extending it so you can see that I still struggle moving stuff around in good notes. It's, there's no perfect way to do it. You just have to have patience when you do it and your end result will be something that you'll be proud of. So that's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in. We've enjoyed sharing these tips and tricks with you. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure that you go check out the video on Shay's channel for the beginning part of these tips if you haven't looked at that already. And make sure you check out her channel if you're looking for any budgeting or any digital planning or just getting your life together. <laughs> She's gonna help you in that category. All right, y'all, till next time. Bye.